I'm here at the 75th NATO Anniversary Summit in Washington, D.C. And for months, this summit was really billed as an opportunity to talk about Ukraine and to help bolster support for the besieged country against Russian aggression. But in recent weeks, it's also become a referendum on U.S. President Joe Biden. Just a few weeks ago, Mr. Biden's uh, re-election campaign suffered really a huge setback when the president struggled to articulate his message and get his points across uh, in a debate against Donald Trump. And that performance has left some even in his own party wondering whether President Biden is the right person for the job, the right person to try and take on and defeat uh, Donald Trump in November's election. Now, the White House has really billed this summit as an opportunity for Biden to reestablish his leadership on the world stage, to show both world leaders and American voters that Biden still has what it takes, still has the stamina, the energy to galvanize this alliance and to galvanize this country. He's already given a fairly forceful speech to open the summit late last night, where he pledged even more support for Ukraine, trying to bolster their aerial defense systems as Russia has really increased uh, aerial aggression against Ukraine in recent weeks. Now, whether he's going to be able to convince world leaders and American voters that he has what it takes is another question. But Washington has already been filled both with security, both with world leaders for what is really a seminal moment for this alliance and for this presidency.